Tyrannosaurus rex and Giganotosaurus carolini are regarded as two of the largest bipedal theropod dinosaurs ever discovered. Both were apex predators in their respective ecosystems, Tyrannosaurus in North America and Giganotosaurus in South America. They were unrivaled in size and power, but what would happen if they were to cross paths? What would happen if they had to fight? This is a highly contentious debate and has become relevant in pop culture through our favorite dinosaur franchise, Jurassic World. Sam Neill, the actor who played Alan Grant in the original Jurassic Park films, confirmed that Giganotosaurus will make its debut in Jurassic Jurassic World Dominion coming to theaters in June 2022. It seems that each Jurassic movie has its big bad dinosaur, and Giganotosaurus takes the lead role in the new movie. I bet we're gonna see a Rexy vs Gigafight, so I'm gonna lay out my prediction on who would win based on modern evidence. I will base this video solely on research, and will strive to be fully unbiased. When you are pleased or displeased with my answer, go and debate it on my Dino Nerds Discord server. The link to join is in the comments and the description. Tyrannosaurus rex is the species of giant Cretaceous theropod we all know and love. We have found more T-Rex fossils than any other dinosaur, giving us the most accurate idea of how this animal looked and behaved. It inhabited North America about 68 to 65 million years ago, and was about 12 to 13 feet tall at the hips, and around 40 feet long from head to tail. Though dinosaur weights are difficult to calculate, it's generally accepted that a fully grown Tyrannosaurus rex weighed between 6 to 7 tons. The species is known to be an opportunistic predator. In other words, Tyrannosaurus did whatever was easiest to find food. It would use its excellent sense of smell to locate dead animals miles away, and if there were none around, it was likely an ambush predator, stalking prey until it was close enough to rush out and quickly dispatch the target. Its prey included Hadrosaurs like Edmontosaurus and Ceratopsians like Eotriceratops. Giganotosaurus carolini is a massive species of Carcharodontosaurid allosaur from the late Cretaceous period, inhabiting South America between 99.6 to 93.5 million years ago. When it was discovered in 1993 by Ruben D. Carolini and subsequently described in 1995, it created a buzz in the scientific community as the first dinosaur to potentially be bigger than the Tyrannosaurus. Because of the incompleteness of Giganotosaurus remains and general lack of specimens, it's impossible to conclusively state that the dinosaur is bigger than Tyrannosaurus. Size estimates place the Giganotosaurus between 39 to 43 feet in length and roughly 6.6 .6 to 9.3 tons, illustrating the lack of data we have on this animal. Scientists believe the animal hunted sauropods like Argentinosaurus, possibly in packs, and likely targeted infants and injured individuals. So who would win in a fight, Giganotosaurus carolini or Tyrannosaurus rex? The first piece of data I must refute is the size difference. We simply don't have enough data to support that one animal is bigger than the other, but here's an interesting thing to note. It is likely that both Tyrannosaurus and Giganotosaurus are roughly 40 feet in length, and this length seems to be the upper limit for theropod sizes based on all data we have collected. I don't think we're going to find any theropods larger than this, as scientists seem to think that this is as large as the skeletons of bipedal dinosaurs could feasibly support. In other words, Tyrannosaurus and Giganotosaurus were equally huge. Next, let's look at the arms of both dinosaurs. Tyrannosaurus obviously had vestigial arms, having lost their function over millions of years of evolution. Instead, the animal relied on heavy jaws for subduing prey. The same thing seems to have happened in Giganotosaurus. Its arms are proportionately tiny when compared to the rest of its head and body. They don't seem to reach prey caught in the jaws of the animal, and if they did, whatever damage they did would be marginal compared to the bite itself. It seems that giant carnivores didn't need arms for subduing their prey, so that doesn't matter. If we can't compare the size, and we can't compare arms, then what differences do the animals have that would give one an advantage over the other? The first noticeable difference between the two dinosaurs is in their skulls. Tyrannosaurus has a compact skull with heavy jaw, while Giganotosaurus' skull has a thinner, more elongated appearance. This causes differences in the way the animals bite. Here's some info pulled from a study. In 2002, Coria and Curie found that various features of the rear part of the skull of Giganotosaurus may have been related to increase mass and length of the jaw muscles, enabling faster closure of the jaws, whereas Tyrannosaurs increased the mass of the lower jaw musculature to increase the power of their bite. Continued, in 2005, Therian and colleagues found that Giganotosaurus and related taxa had adaptations for capturing and bringing down prey by delivering powerful bites, whereas Tyrannosaurus had adaptations for resisting torsional stress and crushing bones. The bite force of Giganotosaurus was weaker than that of Tyrannosaurus. The lower jaws were adapted for slicing bites. These authors suggested that Giganotosaurus and other allosaurs may have been generalized predators that fed on a wide spectrum of prey smaller than themselves, such as juvenile sauropods. I'll provide the links to these studies in the description. Essentially, Giganotosaurus had a weaker bite that was best suited for inflicting wounds over a long period of time on running prey or making smaller prey fall down. You can imagine a scenario where Giga's hunt is a pack, each biting at a small ed Argentinosaurus, gradually injuring it. Over time, the sauropod tires or bleeds out, and the Giganotosaurus moves in for the kill. This style of biting would not be suitable for a fight with a Tyrannosaurus, which was capable of macerating its prey or opponent's flesh and bone in one quick bite as an 
an ambush predator. Even if a Giganotosaurus were to inflict wounds that later caused the Rex to bleed out, I believe a Tyrannosaurus would win every time due to the sheer bite damage. A common argument I hear is that Giganotosaurus was faster and thus would be able to outmaneuver the Tyrannosaurus. However, faster does not mean more agile. Quote, studies by Eric Snively and colleagues published in 2019 indicate that Tyrannosaurus and other Tyrannosaurids were more maneuverable than Allosaurids and other theropods of comparable size due to low rotational inertia compared to their body mass combined with large leg muscles. As a result, it is hypothesized that Tyrannosaurus was capable of making relatively quick turns and could pivot its body more quickly when close to its prey, or that while turning, the theropod could pirouette on a single planted foot while the alternating leg was held out in a suspended swing during pursuit. In other words, the Tyrannosaurus would be able to change its position or stance in a fight with Giganotosaurus to reach a more vulnerable place like the neck. I believe we have a clear winner here, ladies and gentlemen. In conclusion, in a one-on-one -on -one fight between a Tyrannosaurus and Giganotosaurus, where both animals are of good health and fully grown, I find that Tyrannosaurus would conclusively win in most scenarios. The skeletal and muscular structure of its jaws enabled it to have a bite force capable of dispatching another dinosaur in one solid bite, whereas the Giganotosaurus's bite is more useful for long and drawn-out pursuit predation in which it tires and bleeds out its prey. The Tyrannosaurus's low rotational inertia and large leg muscles enabled it to turn on a shorter axis, giving it an advantage in agility and enabling it to outmaneuver a Giganotosaurus in a close encounter. What can I say? Giganotosaurus died out millions of years before Tyrannosaurus. It's possible that Giganotosaurus was too specialized for hunting sauropods or similar prey and paid the price. It took an asteroid to kill off the Tyrannosaurus. I'd say we can expect Rexy to take the dub in Jurassic World. As always, thank you for watching. Remember to keep an open mind, and I'll see you next time.